understand that the outer perimeter of the estate is secured, but what of the surrounding countryside, the villages beyond that? I own most of this damned continent, so why do you find yourself fit to tell your lord where he does and does not need to send his forces? You were a skilled soldier in life, and continue to be so in death. But, but do not believe your few decades of experience are superior to my few centuries. I shall stress to you again, the ritual cannot be interrupted. The amount of magical energy being gathered from the weakened veil of the living and the dead throughout this season would be enough to wipe out the three surrounding city-states, if released incorrectly. Shadows know that the lichens and their ilk are still stalking around at the edge of my domain, and Mortrig in his necromantic coven is surely not content to let me and my dearest simply ascend to blood championhood without a fight. So on that dire note. I want patrols stationed at every access to the estate and the surrounding villages beyond that. If they feel the need to argue with a sudden military presence in their homes, remind them that this very same army is what keeps them from becoming food for the lichens or corpses for the necromancers. Once the ritual is complete, they can return to their daily lives without concern. If they try to interfere or resist the occupation in any way, well, you'll be quick to remind them of their place on the food chain, Captain. You are dismissed. Ah, my dear, I apologize for keeping you waiting. I saw you standing there, but I was not yet free from the plight of politics. The fact that politics at all have arisen in something so dire as, as the ritual to waken our mutual blood bond is simply downright baffling. I shouldn't need to explain to our subjects why protecting the greatest ritual to ever be performed in our century is of the utmost importance. <sighs> Yet here I am, repeating myself like a vampire who's gone mad with thirst. How tiresome. Yes, I suppose you are right. A drop of prevention is worth the gallons of blood we would save if we can avoid simply outright slaughtering any who tries to stop us. We have established a new kingdom here over the past four months, brought almost every city and state beneath our rule, and turned most of the competent mortals into thralls or fellow vampires under our servitude. Yet I know how you feel it too. There is deception among our subjects, deceit, a brewing betrayal. Unlike my kingdom to the east that we were forced to abandon, this empire here in the west was built on blood and conquest. We could only rely on their fear and loyalty for so long. Furthermore, we face the biggest complication yet, as I'm sure you can see. The moon has not yet risen. Three nights passed when we should have had the first, even waxing, of its glorious light. The ritual needs a full moon in order to be completed properly. And yet, it is hidden from us denying us the final source of power that we need to ascend. A full moon during the month of October, when the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest and we 
are able to essentially link ourselves to previous blood champions who have lived and died. That connection is important, if, if not the most important aspect of the entire ritual. Without it, we may as well be calling into the empty void. Hmm? You are saying that a new moon, or lack of moon, is used in darker, more black rituals. Huh. So you believe Mortrig and his filth are trying to buy time by stealing the moon from us when we need it the most. I had not considered this. It is entirely possible that their power could have grown as well as our own. It has been months and they did have a endless supply of our subjects to use as fuel. That is very clever. If you are right, and they are using our previous subjects' souls and flesh as fuel for this moon subjugating ritual, then we will be un unable to stop them a full continent and ocean away. Our scrying is not that powerful, and we would need to both destroy their source of fuel and stop Mordred personally. That is an act we simply cannot achieve. A full continent away. That's it. The filthy lichens are obsessed with the moon and its power. After all, my dear, it's what birthed the curse in the first place. If we could track down and pry the information from them, we may be able to disperse Mortrig's veil of shadows from the moon and finally have the power we need to ascend. You are, as ever, my most brilliant and wonderful companion, my dear. You step into my world and every problem suddenly has a clear solution, every ailment a cure. I love you. Ever so much. Now then, we must prepare. I would ask if you plan to accompany me, but I do believe it would simply be a waste of my, well, non-existent breath. Your dagger and traveling gear are ready whenever you require them, but I must warn you, my dear. Lichens are not the only entities linked to the moon and its influence. Everything from basic necromancy to the eldritch entities of the void are tied to it. When one calls upon the moon, they must know precisely what they are doing. If we are ourselves, do not only call upon it, but strengthen the moon to be able to breach through Mortrig's veil, then we must be wary in the process. We do not wish to free ourselves of Mortrig's interference and find ourselves besieged by something completely new in the process. As we have said, my dear, a drop of precaution. Now, run along and prepare yourself. I will don my own traveling armor and meet you at the gate. The lichens attempt to push into our territory every chance they get, so finding one to interrogate should not be difficult. Ah, my dear. Into the fray yet again we go, as the mortals would say. For months we are prepared, and the time of our ascension is finally within our grasp. Soon, even the moon itself shall submit to our rule.